Yeah, okay, so if you're starting to watch this now, <clears throat> or you've been sticking around the whole time, this is effectively focused on this better understanding command line, the standard output, and the standard error. Um, because if you don't have like an intro to these things, and you start messing around in the command line, and you start like doing stuff, um, it can be really hard to understand what's a good message from a bad message. And unless you do anything, you're going to have both warnings and info messages, and they're, they're going to be mixed up, and it's not ideal. So what we've covered so far, I'll just recap real quick, is basically, let's start with, with Unix, right? We could do echo, hello, hello, world, like that. And I put this in the single, uh, single quote so that we don't have any side effects. So this is standard output. We have standard out, sorry, standard error. Anytime we have like basically an invalid command, so this is standard error. But note that beside the actual message, I don't know that either of these are good or bad messages. So basically, the really simple way to deal with this is like, let's say you have like some command over here. It could be anything. It could be echo, hello world. It could be anything. You want the standard out to be in a separate file, and the standard error to be in its own file. So standard out uses the this syntax, or this one. It's just a shortcut. Um, standard error looks like this. And so this is actually arbitrary. We could name this file to anything that we want. So this could be like, this is bad stuff, yo. And then you'd be like, this is the good stuff. Even though these would be like, terrible, terrible names for files. Um, anyway, no matter what happens now, we've partitioned the good from the bad messages, and that's really important. Another thing that we've learned is, just in case you wanted to, how to redirect the standard error or the standard output to basically the opposite stream, right? So like, let's say, for some reason, I have this message, and I want this to basically register as an error. What I can do, oops, what I can do is say like, take the message from standard error, no, sorry, I have to be careful here. Take the message from standard output, so the good message, and redirect it into standard error. So, looks normal, but if I go ahead and, and catch basically any errors, and I put them in like my error file, it's catching it. And so the point is, we have these two streams. We have our output and our errors. We can redirect them. We can capture them. Um, we can make our own files. And, and, and effectively, we have a lot of sort of control over how we get messages and how we put them into files. And, and so, like, it's all the same. Whether you're printing to a file or you're printing the standard output or you're printing the standard error, they're just basically like places that you can capture data. The last thing I just want to mention that I forgot to mention before is if you wanted to hide um, a message from standard error or standard output, how, how would you do that? So let me just check if there's any questions. Hey, Nick. Okay, so so yeah, so before, um, I don't think you missed much. I basically talked about what I just talked about now, which is like, how do you think about standard output? How do you think about standard error? Which is basically the ways that the uh, like the console environment will basically leave you messages. So sometimes I get a good message, sometimes I get a bad message, and I basically want to filter the good messages from the bad messages. And so like the the point blank answer for how to do that is whatever command that you run, you can capture the good messages like this and put this in a file name that you come up with. So here I'm just putting it into a file that we're going to create called standard output. And then here we'll capture the errors, which is the two, and we put that into another file name that we create. And if I wanted to make this shorter, that would be equivalent. Uh, yes, I can make the font bigger. Thank you for pointing that out. So, <clears throat> so basically, we have a command here, and we want to capture the standard output and capture the standard error. And so these are the files that we'll put them, but we could we could name these anything we want. So right, like let's say like like let's say Inaria is like our good file. And let's say like Nick. Like was it Nick? Nick. Nick. 
is our errors. So whatever happens, we're gonna capture our messages in either an area or nick, nick, nick those files. Um, yeah, okay, so, so now, let's start to play around with this because now that we can get like messages on the command line, let's do something a little bit creative with it. Oh, let me actually answer, let me answer Nick's question, which is what are like the most um, important command line, like, like commands that we can use? Command line commands. All right, so there's a couple. It's like five that we'll cover real quick, right? So I am somewhere in my computer, right? So if I wanna move around, I can use CD for change directory, right? So I can do like, CD, if I want to go up one directory, then I go like this. Um, so like, hmm, just trying to think of a good example. Let me just like make a few, okay, so like to make a folder, for example, right? I can do mkdir, which is for make directory. Oops. And if you want to learn more about it, you can do man make dir. And then like if you're tired of the screen, you can just hit the Q button and it should exit. Yeah, okay, so I'm gonna make a directory called folder. Okay, I've made a directory, but now I wanna go in my directory. So now I can do cd, which is for change directory, right? So now I'm gonna change into my directory. So I need to uh, give it a directory name, right? So I can do cd and then folder, okay? So now I'm inside of it, and I can see that I'm inside of it because I see folder here. It's like, nah, I'm done, I don't wanna be here anymore. If I wanna get out of my folder, I can do CD, and I can just do this syntax to basically go up. I wanna get out, right? So usually dot means the current directory. If I do like ls for like list, I wanna list my files. I can list my files in my current directory, and I don't have any files here, so I don't see anything. But if I go up, and then I list those files, I see I have some more stuff here. Is the stream still working for you guys? Yeah, it's working for me, it should be all right. So, so yeah, like basically you've covered like ls, cd, make dir, uh, and there are a ton of them. Um, are there like any other like super important ones? I think like those are probably fine to start. So you can move around, you can see like see what you like, you can see files. Um, oh, and like let's talk about one more. Like if you wanted to remove a file, right? So we can make a folder. How do we remove a folder? So you can do remove with rm, right? So we do rm for remove, like rm. And then the name of the file. So like, let's say we want to remove folder, right? I do remove folder. Hey, I get a message. So what we can do real quick, like is this standard output or is it a standard error? Um, what we can do real quick to check is we can hide the message if it was standard output. So we're only gonna see standard errors. If we wanted to hide a message, then we can do, uh, we'll call the command again, and we're gonna hide the standard output like this, and we can do this. So this is a program that literally will capture any data and hide it. So, so now, if we get a message, it's because it's standard error and not standard output. Okay, so this is definitely not a good message, it's saying, hey, wait a minute, this is a, a directory. So if you wanted to remove a directory, what you would need to do is rm slash, I think it's recursive, let me just try. Yeah, okay, so, so folders are special um, because like a folder isn't a file, a folder is a thing with things inside of it, right? So like if I had like my folder and then I had like my folder file one or like file A, folder file, oops, file B, if I do like remove folder, it doesn't know if I want to also delete these files. So I need to add a parameter called remove dash r. And dash r here is for recursive, which means I want you to not only go into the folder, but I want you to delete everything inside 
of the folder as well. So we can do rm slash r and then folder. Just be like really careful when you use these commands, especially rm, um, because it's different. Like if I'm on a Mac and I delete a file, right? I put it in the trash can and then I can go to the trash can and I can put it back. Um, RM doesn't care about that. RM will just straight up delete the file. So you need to be a little bit sort of sensitive when you're using the RM command, especially the RMR, because you're not just deleting one file, you're deleting a lot. Um, and, and unless you like do something special, there isn't like a magic undo here, right? I can't be like, fix that. It, it won't work. So just be like, just be careful. All right, let's check if there's any comments. So what is the reason to use? Yeah, so why would you even use the command line in the first place? It's a really good question. Um, the thing is, like, if you can avoid the command line, there's nothing wrong with that. You don't necessarily need to use the command line. But at the same time, if I want to write a script and I want the script to do something, um, like... Like, like like the Twitter bot, right? Like the Twitter bot is on a server. So I can like go to the server. So now I'm in the server and I want to run the command. The thing is the, the server is like as basic as it gets. The server doesn't have like a pretty user interface. It doesn't have the stuff unless I do something special. So like pretty much all computers come with some kind of a command line because it's like it's like the actual engine inside of the car. If I have a car, that's pretty, but if I like open up the car, that's kind of what the command line is like. It's like the ugly engine and stuff under the hood. So computers have command lines um, like by default because that's how that's like one of the the ways that you can use a computer without all these like graphics and apps and stuff. So so like when you hear something is like Unix based, it means effectively that it runs on software that works like this under the hood. And so like, um, if I'm not mistaken, like iOS for like iPhones runs on a Unix based system. You just never see it because it's like so ugly. Apple doesn't want to show you it. But like most computers, if not like all of them, um, like I, I need to be careful, but like most computers work in some way with some command line. Um, Windows has its own command line, It you know, like, Different operating systems have like different quirks, but command lines allow you to write and execute and run programs um, automatically. So if I like want to do something, I don't have to like open up Chrome and log into my email and then like do something every time. It's much easier for me to just like make a script and like run, like run automatically, and then I don't have to think about it because the, the script is controlling the computer, I don't have to go and control the computer myself. So that's why you would, would use the command line. Because computers come with it by default, and because you can do things automatically with them that you can't really do like, by like, opening up your email and logging into it every time. So just if you, if you need a why, the, the why is it's automatic. You can script things, you can program things, and you can make it do stuff automatically. So yeah. Okay, do you guys have questions about this so far? Or like anything that we've talked about? Okay, I think we're good. So, um, if you guys are interested, I want to spend some time doing some sort of fun stuff because this is kind of boring. So like, let's go to Go. So if you wanted to start um, playing with Go, you can go to like tor.golang, no, not tor, sorry, play, played? Yeah. Let me make the text big. So you can go to play.golang.org. And here's where you can just like start playing with Go immediately. Um, I have it installed locally, but Go is pretty easy to start getting you to like to start running. So the thing is, anything that I'm going to do here, you should be able to do it in any other programming language. So like, Go is just the programming language that I choose to use. And if you're interested in learning Go, Go is like a really really phenomenal language for uh, 
like backend stuff um, for like programming websites to do stuff for you. Okay, so let's try to do some cool stuff, right? So like let's say I do like fumt print line uh, and we'll like put like an emoji an emoji here. Uh, we'll put like put like this guy. Okay, and then so 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 what's going on, right? We have fumt, which is for format. We have print line, which is for print line, and we have our argument, which is this emoji. And so basically, what we can expect is to just get emoji on the command line. And remember before, this is technically equivalent to this. The problem with this is that um, it's just like it's too verbose, right? We don't need to know that it's standard output because standard output is default. So we can just go back to here, okay? So we're just gonna print a message to the command line. Uh, here, okay. We're gonna do go run, oops. Uh, do error and output. Okay, we do go run test.go. All right, so we get our emoji. So like, let's say I have uh, a couple of emojis that I want to like show. Um, like, uh, like, can we animate these emojis so that like we get them right after each other? Because that'd be pretty cool, right? Uh, let's start to experiment with that. Uh, what am I trying to do? This one. Oh, great! Thank you for asking questions. Why we use fumt? Right. Okay. So, so technically, technically. You don't have to. You could do this, um, but like Go wants you to. You like here. Let me try to be succinct about this. So programming languages often come with a standard library, which is like an actual library, right? It's a place that you can go to get like not books, but like functions that were written already. So Fumt is simply one of the the packages in the standard library, right? So, like, I go here, print line, hello, world. And then I need to go ahead and import this. So, like, the reason this might look weird to you is because in other languages, like in JavaScript, you don't need to do this, right? You can just do, like, console log. Oops. Or, like, in... Uh, like Python, I'm sure you can just do like print, right? The thing is, whether or not you're like using like like Python and those programming languages try to hide a lot of complexity for you, which is kind of nice, except that um, like I don't know how to explain this. It's like if you hide complexity, it can create complexity, right? Like if you hide too much, it can come back to bite you. So Go tries to be really, really explicit about everything. If we're using a, um, <clears throat> if, we, if we're using like a, a function that we're getting from the Go standard library, Go wants us to make sure that's clear. And it's also a good idea that we that we like use fumt in front of something because, um, like, as you like write really big programs, you might have like variable a defined here and then like variable a define like down here. And it's like much nicer to know where a function's coming from. So like, let's say I like import like fumt io, like if I like import all these like random things, and like let's say in go, I didn't need to put fumt in front of everything. Well, I wouldn't have a way of knowing if like, like fumt and io both have a print line. So it'd be really problematic. So it's much easier to just say, hey, this function actually belongs to this package or this module. So, so that being said, if you wanted to override Go and be like, nah, Go, screw you. I just want to like print this and I don't want to worry about where it's coming from. You can do that, right? Remember in the command line, we talked about how dot 
just means like the current directory. If I do like ls dot, it's like where, where I am right now. Um, if I put a dot in front of fmt, then technically I can just like do print line and then this feels like very Python-y, right? So I can do go run test.go and that works. It's just, it's much more common that you would see this because it creates less problems into the future. And then again, right, FMT is really just short for format. Just exactly the same way as like printf is short for, for like print format. So like, like in programming, you're gonna have all these like super weird words like func, right? Function, fmt, format. Uh, what are some more like print line? Print line, print f, print format. So, so programming would just like try to be like super concise, which like to like non English speakers or like non programmers will make absolutely no sense. So, just like keep this in, in mind. Oh, great. I love the questions. Okay, so. Right, let me let me okay so in area you said just like system out print yeah um, so that's so I bet you I don't know this because I haven't programmed in Java but I bet you that in Java that like system out system is basically like it's not the same but it's like almost equivalent to uh, format in this sense. So it's like, hey, I'm calling a dependency. This isn't a function that I wrote, it's a function that I'm inheriting from Java. And I bet you that out is basically like for like standard output. Let me look that up real quick, so I'm interested. Java print to standard error. How do I print to standard error? Yeah, so, so yeah, right? Um, let me show you like a quick translation. So system error print would be equivalent in Go to fmt print, uh, was it f print line, os dot standard error, and then this would be your argument, which would be this guy, which means that the same thing down here, whoops, standard out. So these are equivalent statements just in different programming languages. I think that's big enough. Okay, next question. Let me check. This is fun. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, so one function can work with different libraries. So one function can work with different libraries. I'm trying to understand what that means. One function can work with different libraries. Well, like... You, oh, yeah, so if I'm, if I'm understanding you, wherever you write a program, if you import that dependency, like, like I am here, um, then you can use another, another, like another, like, um, like let's say I'm not in my main file, like I'm in some other file. I can still use format, even though I'm not in my main. And the point is, as long as I put FMT in front of it, my, I know where this function's coming from. So yeah, you can use uh, like these types of functions in other files. It doesn't have to just be like your main file if that's what you meant. Um, yeah, yeah, all right. And so this is standard out and standard error. Okay, so let's go back to our emojis. Um, I'll keep this for now. Okay. Okay, like let's take, well, let's, let's do something more simple. Let's do like hello world. So it turns out that not only can I like print to my standard output, I can actually like do some like pretty clever stuff. I can actually like delete a character and then write another character in place of it. So let me show you what I mean. Um, okay, so I'm gonna like delete W-O-R-L-D with five backspaces, so one, two, three, four. So I need one more, and then I'm gonna put like darkness, right? 
so what do you think will happen when I run this program? Um, I don't. I think. I mean, I think this should work in other programming languages. I haven't checked, but I think it's a standard thing. Um, so what do you think will will happen, right? So what? So I'm going to run it. Um, let's see. So that's super interesting, right? We can actually we can delete something after it's happened, which is weird. So like, it's like we're like going, we're like, we're going forward and then we're going backward and then we're going forward again. So I mean, obviously you could write this or you could use the fact that this exists to like do something interesting, which is sort of like the, the motivation for this. Okay, so like, let's say, Uh, let's, okay, I think we can use an emoji now. Let's do like these two. So like what happens if I put this between this one, right? Okay, I'm gonna get the, this one, which is the second one. So that's pretty interesting. What if we put like a delay between it? So we we still see the first one and then we see the second one. Can we do that? So in Go, we're going to import another um, another like standard library for for time like that, and now we can just do like time. So we say like time sleep uh, one times time second. So if I want to sleep for one second, I can do this or I can do this. Either one is fine. I just think this is a bit more readable. Okay, so let's check the uh, what happened. Oh. So it's complaining because I'm using fumt and I'm not actually using it. Okay, let's just put this here. Okay, so I'm here and I just want to sleep for a second. Can I do that? So notice that nothing happened for a moment, right? Which means that we can like combine these two statements to do something that's like much more interesting. So like let's say I'm gonna like print like fumt like the number one and then I'll do like time sleep one time dot second and then I'll do like fumt print line two. Let's just see I don't I don't know if this will work, but oh wait, let's do like let's do like that. Uh, okay, so now we have fumt and time and then we're gonna see what happens. Okay, let's get rid of the new line and just try that again. That's so great. Yeah, like the thing is like when you're like learning this stuff in like in isolation, um, like I, I, I know how you feel. It's like you're just like supposed to know this stuff and like somebody was supposed to tell you and like you're like... The, it's like weird how much um, we expect from developers without sort of like, like, it's fr like, I don't know, like, if you want to be a developer, you have to know this stuff, but you also have to, like, know that you need to know this stuff. So, yeah, that's what these are for. Um, okay, so let's see what happens. All right, so let's go to our program. Super simple. We'll print one. We'll sleep for a second. We'll try to delete the one, print a two, and then there will be a new line, right? So the difference between these two functions, they're not the same. This one doesn't have a line at the end, right? So we're not gonna print the line, we're just gonna print. So that would be equivalent to like, if I do like print hello, uh, sorry, print like F, like see how hello is right here and then my text is like right up on it. That's what happens if I don't have a new line at the end of it. So that's why these two functions are, are different from each other. Okay, let's try that. That's pretty cool. Um, so, so, I don't know if you saw, let me, let me run it again. We got one, it went back, changed it to two. So, the, the reason that's really interesting is because like we can we can do something with this right so like let's do like we'll print one we'll like sleep for a second we'll like print something else and we'll just we'll, 
let's like try to make this whole thing a function so we can repeat it. Um, so how would we do that, right? We would do like, we want to put like two somewhere and then we want to delete it and we want to wait and then we want to delete that and put a three. But we don't want to have, like, we only want the last one to print the line at the end. So like, let's just refactor this and do like a funk to print line. And the things like print line can actually be empty. Um, and I think in most programming languages, that's like, that's cool. So, okay, so like now we can expect we get like one, delete, two, delete, and then this would be three. Yeah, I think that's right. Okay, let's try, let's try that. That's pretty cool. Um, and then let's like make this one second and then let's try that again. So this is really interesting um, because once we have sort of enough base logic, we can sort of start to like really make this fancy. So let's do it like this. Can we use a like, like in Go, there's no while, but there is for. So you just replace like any while loop with a for loop. Still, like, please, please ask questions if you have them. Uh, okay, cool, just checking. Okay, so, yeah, we're back. So, so, so let's try to do something interesting, right? Let's do like a for loop, and then I wanna do like one through 10, right? So how do we just like print one through 10 and not do anything fancy? So like, we can do like for, we do like x is equal to zero. This is just like how we initialize a variable. So it's like, var, like we can do like var a equals one, or we can do a is equal to one. These are equivalent. We're doing x is equal to zero. So while x is less than 10, and then every time increment. Um, this whole sentence is effectively like, the same thing as this. It's like saying like, it's like x is equal to zero, and then I do four x is less than 10, and then I do x plus plus. So this is pretty verbose. I have to like initialize x, and then I do this loop. It's like, it's basically like an if statement, but instead it's loop if. So I'm basically doing this thing until x becomes uh, the same or greater than 10. So we just do four instead. And then every time it goes through this loop, I'm going to increment x, right? So instead, I'll leave this here. But the point is that this is such a common pattern that we have four, we can use a for loop like this. Yeah, so, so, uh, <laughs> good question. There's no parentheses in uh, go in this example. Like, um, I don't even know if I can put them there. So the thing is you don't, actually need parentheses, um, but I think like in JavaScript, there's a reason for it. And I think I know what the reason is. Let me just check real quick. I'm pretty sure if I do like if, let me make this bigger. I'm pretty sure if I do like if true, right, I have to do like that, true. And I could do like uh, console log, hello. I'm pretty sure I don't need these parentheses, sorry, these brackets at all. Right, so <laughs> um, this is a little crazy. So the, the point is JavaScript is such a flexible language that to make up for the fact that you don't need to put these like brackets, you do have to wrap the, the Boolean in parentheses. But because Go is much, much, much more structured than JavaScript, you don't have this like extraneous parentheses. You don't need them because these are forced and you have to put them. If I went back to this statement and I just got rid of this guy, it's not gonna work. So we, we basically, we have to have this, but at the same time, we don't have to have this anymore, right? So it's, it, that's why. Okay, cool. So now I'm gonna do, uh, we'll do like fumpt print x, and then, yeah, so this is how we do a, a for loop, right? 
Okay, I can delete that now. And then let's try that again. Uh, oops. What did I just do? Okay, let's try that again. Okay. Cool, right? We got zero through 10. So now we want to like build this logic into it, right? So like, let's look at this. So in Go, we can do something pretty cool. We know that no matter what, no matter what, when, we, when we're, we're finished, we want to put this new line. Um, so what we can do instead, because it's a bit more expressive, we can do defer from to print line. And I think JavaScript has this too now. It just means that when we exit the main function, call this function. So we're basically saying like, hey, just so you know, when you're like cleaning up this function, do this thing. Um, because that may not make sense to you, let me just do like, Fimp to print line, hello. And if I do like Fimp to print line, world, right Right now we would expect to see world and then hello printed in that order. So I can run that, I get world and hello. But if I put defer in front of it, in front of it then I'm gonna get hello first because this is basically going after it. And it's not like just one line of code, it's actually going all the way to the bottom right before this guy. So that's where this is evaluating. So which which means if we go to here and we run this, we do get hello world instead. Okay, so that's interesting, right? We can use defer here to defer, right? To defer means putting off in actions, like waiting till later. We're gonna defer printing our new line until the end. And that means we don't have to worry about it. Then we go back to here and we have a for loop. Then we have this stuff. So what we can do is we basically wanna move this logic inside of our for loop. And then we can just get rid of this. Um, let's, I think I need to do this. And then we'll put this one here. So basically I'm gonna put this in front of the for loop and then this inside of the for loop which means this needs to go here. Okay. Yeah, so how are we doing by the way? Are we two? Hey, we're three. Oh, sorry, so you said JavaScript has defer and async. Do they do something similar? Um, I don't know JavaScript. Um, well enough to say like yes or no to that, but I can find out for you very quickly. So we know what defer does. What does async? Actually, I think async, so async stands for asynchronously. Async, synchronous, God, this word is intense. Okay, let me like break this up for you. So a sync chrono -sly. So um, a, basically means not. Sync is for synchronize. Chrono is for time. And then like, you can just like forget about Isli. So what's happening is we're saying this does not happen at the same time. This is how weird English is. So if you do something synchronously, that means that it's like, it's like A, then B, then C happens in this order, right? So we have like A, B, and C. They're happening one after each other. If we have something happening asynchronously, then basically A, B, and C can run at the same time, which means it's actually more like A, B, and C are happening on like the same line of code, which is like a little confusing. So instead of like, you have like one person walking and you have another person walking behind them, you have them walking next to each other. So asynchronously, right, it means not in, it's like not happening at the same time. So I bet you that async in JavaScript means run this program, at the, like run this thing at the same time. So an async function, asynchronous, This documentation doesn't just like tell you. Y 
Yeah, yeah. So um, whenever you hear like 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 JavaScript is like has all this like promises and like async and like all this stuff, um, like the way you can think about this, it's like it's running a function, and then it needs to like do something when it's done, which is the point of a promise, right? So it's like, hey, I'll do this thing, and then I promise to do something after it. Um, and the reason like you need promises, I'm pretty sure, is because if you have asynchronous functions, if you have functions happening at the same time, you need some sort of way to like control them. You need to tell them what to do. So, so like, if I have like function one, function two, function three, it's very easy for me to like deal with them individually. So I don't like I don't need promises here, but I might need promises if I'm running them at the same time and I like can't easily or intuitively deal with them individually. So I think that's why you would use a promise. But to be honest, I'm not 100% sure. Okay, so, so here we are. So this is, don't confuse this with async. This, this does not mean the same thing. Um, this is just a shortcut for saying, put this thing down here. That's all, that's all it really means. So we're gonna defer our new line until the end of our, our, our like program. We'll print one and then let's like make that zero. And then from one through nine, we'll wait a second, delete it, and then, okay, so then we need to put X here. So uh, we do percent D, which means we're putting a number here instead. We'll do print, so we do print format. And then percent D is for decimal, which is like a number, zero through nine, our decimal numbers. And then I need to give it an argument. So I can say x here. OK, so I think this will work. Let's try that. So it's a way to manage the order. Pretty clear. Yeah, so, so defer and async are very similar in the sense that they like let you control the behavior, like you said. But they're different in terms of like their meaning. So asynchronously, they're happening at the same time. Um, defer means like you're just like pushing it behind everything else. So it's like it's like if um, it's like if you've ever like watched a TV show, they're like go to the back of the line. Like that's what defer means. It means like go to the back. That's that's what that's how you can think about defer. Okay, so let's see what happens if we run our our program. Oh, sorry, it's complaining about time. Okay, let's try it again. So it's working, right? Let's make sure it works all the way to the end. So we've just animated something on the command line, which is like super weird because, because the command line doesn't feel like it's interactive in any way, right? So. So the point is this is like a really interesting thing that we can do to like not just print standard output, not just print standard errors, but like also like like do something interesting. Okay, so like let's take this a step further. And then once we get to to 9, let's do a final one. Um, let's say like once we get to 10, we'll just like we'll have it explode. So that'll be where we use our first emoji. So like I'll just like copy this expression and then in uh, and then we can do like, let's put like an explosion. Explosion. Okay. Okay, so, right, we want to go, um, let's start this at one, because that feels more human. We're going to go one, two, three, all the way through, let's do like five. So at five, we expect this to explode. Okay. One, two, three, four, wait. One, two, three. What's happening, right? It's missing, it starts at two, three, four. So maybe, yeah, because it's one, Oh, it's exiting, I see. It's exiting when it gets to five, which means it never evaluates it, right. 
So like six is probably what I meant to say. Um, actually, this is like much more readable. Okay, so we're basically, we're gonna go up to, but not including, is four, is it two, three, four? Why is it happening? Once it gets to five, oh, sorry. It's doing it, but there's no delay, so we're not seeing it. It's happening in like milliseconds. Oh, that was weird. Two, three, four. Okay, so yeah, there we go. That's why this was acting weird. Four, five, right? And so we need this delay so we don't just overwrite this. So there's different ways we could deal with that, but that's effectively what's going on. Okay, so this is cool. We, we're, we're getting somewhere, right? Um, we have one emoji. Can we like take a collection of emojis and then animate them? Uh, you guys have any questions? Okay. Um, can we like refactor this code to make it cleaner? Cause that'd be kind of nice. So like the repeating pattern that we have is this thing, right? We have like, like let's like make a function called wait and then like let's make wait take some like uh, it's like like take a string so we do s for string and then we'll like make it no matter what we're gonna make it like sleep right so we're gonna take basically these two lines throw them into here okay so no matter what whenever we call wait we're gonna sleep and then we want to print the string okay so like let's put because we're gonna go delete one character and then we're gonna put a uh, put like a percent s. Then we can put s. And then like now we can do wait. So we have one problem when we do this though, which is x is an integer or an int, right? Integer, and this is a string. So the thing is, this is this is an example where where JavaScript doesn't care. Um, JavaScript is like so flexible that like you can do crazy stuff in JavaScript that like you shouldn't be allowed to do. But if I try to run this in Go, it's gonna complain. It's saying, hey, X is an int and you've only defined weight as taking a string. So this is a problem. So in Go, we can do something really, really cool, which is we can take an interface. And this is like a way of saying, I don't care what the type is, just like, let me take it, right? So we can use an interface instead, which means none of this code needs to change. And it doesn't actually matter whether it was a string or an int at all, right? So now we can probably run this without any problems. Uh, yeah, I think that's fine. Um, it's complaining because we renamed V. So, oh, 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 that looks some. <laughs> uh, I failed. Um, so we can do. Can we just do like V? Yeah. Okay. Cool. Cool. So like, let's do like, uh, let's do like, three hundred milliseconds. <laughs> Right, boom. Okay, so all right, so now we're we're getting somewhere. So let's go ahead and like just put this aside for now. And let's make a collection of emoji, right? So let's do like funk. Oops. Let's do like funk funk main. And so like in, in Go, you can define an array like this. So we're gonna have like an array of string, and then in my array I have my my emojis. So like, let's do like, um, let's just start simple. Let's go through like all the cats. So this is really similar to the Schrodinger example from the, the learn you some view where we have like all these different emojis and we can put them into an array so that they're like, they're separate, but they're also together. So the only thing we would need to do is to basically like put these individually in their own strings. So to do that, I'll put them on their own line and then we're just gonna wrap them in a string, put that there, and then we can go back to here.
Okay, so now these are ready. Okay, cool. So now we can say for each of our cats in our cats, so it's like a for loop, right? Uh, so like for each cat in cats, let's do mood, I think that's better. For each mood in moods, we can do fumt print line mood. Should work. Oh, okay. Okay, cool. We've got our kittens. And then the question was um, emoji is a string. Well, like, if you think about it, all a string technically is, like, if I have, like, Nick, right, as a string, technically, it's, like, actually an array of characters, right? It's like this. And technically, an array of characters is actually an array of numbers. So, like, uh, if I do, like, man, like I term man ASCII, remember, man is how we look something up in the manual. Is that high school manual? I'm not sure. Um, if I do like man, like man ASCII, and then I look up Nick, right? I have, all right, so I have 110. So like 110, where's the I? There, uh, okay, 105. Um, C, 99, and then K, 107. Okay, so like technically, I should be able to even do this, which like might surprise you. And I, I promise this is relevant. So I can do like, like funk main, maybe like var care, uh, let's do like cars, center, whoops, string, um, no, we're not doing strings anymore. We're doing ints. Okay. And then I can do like four car range cars. Foom print line. Um, uh, is that right? Uh, let's try this. And then Let's try that real quick. Um, cars, car, what's the problem? Oh, uh, yeah, I think we want to do like string. What? Right? So the point is that the way that computers work is we need some way to translate like these raw bits and bytes into like meaningful data. And so the point is, like, these expressions are completely equivalent. Um, so, like, like the point is, uh, here, let's do like that. So the point is, if we go back to here, <clears throat> we could have an array of, of, like, ints. Like, there's, like, different ways we could do this. But this is probably the most, like, like user-friendly way to do it. Um, because I don't think this is very friendly, and I don't think that this is very friendly either. So, I mean, there might be another way to do it. What I've also tried before is putting this in one string, because it's like, why do you need like seven strings when you can have one? But the problem is that um, emojis, like the letter A is like, like if I do like uh, length of A, like length, uh, just like in like JavaScript, right? Like A length, something like that. Um, if I do that, I'm going to expect to get like one, right? The thing is, uh, emoji are weird, and sometimes you're going to get like two or three. So instead of using one string and then putting all the emoji inside of it, the safest way that I know is to just put them in an array of strings instead. <sighs> Thank you.
Great. <laughs> there was Siege of Cypher's Challenge of Rico Camp. Get to yeah, exactly. Um, so, like, if you're converting letters from uppercase to lowercase, you need to move them 32. Because, like, if you do man ASCII and you look, like, capital H is 72, whereas lowercase h is somewhere there. It's Right, so 72 plus 32 is 104. So you need to shift characters like 32 up or down if you want to change their case, just for what it's worth. Right, okay, so cool. So now we can like take this information and, and like, and, and animate it, right? Which is like really exciting. So this is where we were before. So how do we like combine these two? Let's just copy this, and we'll get rid of this stuff for now. Okay, so let's start here. And then, you know what, we don't need like X's anymore. We can just use mood. We do like mood, range moods. And I wanna print every mood. And then I don't need this anymore. And then I can just do Wait, 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 <laughs> sorry, I forgot this. Okay, so this is really, really cool. We, what is going on? What, what did I, I like killed my cat. What did I do to my cat? Okay. I got my cats, right? I got my kittens. And now we're gonna, we're gonna, this is actually much easier if we just do like this, right? And I don't need that, cool. So we have moods for each mood in our, let's do kitten. Kitten, kittens. Oh my God, hang on. Okay, and then kitten, kitten, kitten. Um, I think this will work. Let's, let's see. Okay, here we go, guys. What? <laughs> what the heck? <laughs> oh, oh my God, that's embarrassing. Um, you have to be careful because with for loops, it's expecting two values. And we were just getting the first one. Right, so this is the index, and then this is the value, and then this would be like the array. So what happened is it worked because we were iterating through the index, which would be like zero, one, two, three, and so on. So what we need to do is skip the index, but keep the value, like that. Okay, let's do, let's do that. Hey, that is so fun. Okay, and then like, let's, let's like, Let's go back, let's make this 100. Let's do that again, right? So, so this is sort of <laughs> useless, but it's also like adorable that, you know, the command line doesn't have to be this like scary, creepy, painful thing. We can use it to like do something fun and we can also use it to do something that like, like almost seems like impossible. So anyway, before we wrap this up, do you guys have any like final thoughts or questions before we finish the stream? If there's anything that like I didn't answer or anything you're still sort of wondering about? Um, let me just do, yeah, I, I just want to point one thing out real quick. Um, you might like try to like put this in a browser and run it like on, like if I go to like play.golang and I put this here, I don't think it's going to work because, will it? 
I don't think it will. <laughs> um, yeah, because this isn't, the backspace isn't doing anything here. Because this is like HTML, this isn't going to register like a native uh, console. But it does work um, locally, which is like super cool. Uh, now, now, like, what happens if we put it in its own file? What the hell happens then? Okay, so we get the last one because it's deleting it. That makes sense. Yeah, cool. We covered a lot today. Standard output, standard error. All right, so the question was, yeah, um, yeah, let me cover it for, like, I'll, I'll close the stream, Nick, but, sorry, I'll, I'll stop the video, but then I can cover uh, command line with you real quick. Just for, like, five minutes, if you like. Um, yeah, so, so this stuff is powerful, um, and it's not that hard. I mean, like, if it is, like, if you're trying it for the first time, yeah, but, like, think about this. How many, like, lines of code do you write per day? And, like, think of this. This is, like, seven lines of code, and you can do something that, like, you shouldn't be allowed to do. Um, so that's awesome. Um, there's a lot of, like, practical use cases for this. So... So, so that, yeah, that's really cool. Um, okay, so the, the question was, when's the next live stream? Honestly, I'm trying to do this every single day, twice a day, at the same times. So like, if we're talking Indonesia time, this would be uh, 11 a.m. and then like 8 p.m. at night, um, which I can change if it like would work for more people. Uh, but the next one, so like tomorrow morning, I'm gonna do, um, another view one, and then tomorrow night, I think I want to do another how to animate, like this one, but instead of the command line, to do it in HTML. So you can sort of see some clever techniques to do this in a website and not just in the command line. Okay, cool. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop the recording, but I'll keep the stream online, and I'll just cover the command line real quick too. All right. Thank you guys for, for contributing to this. I really appreciate it.